Hey, I'm John Tabler. Welcome back. Today, it's going to be really good and fun. We're going to make sourdough pan pizza in five minutes or less. I'm going to show you how to make pizza for breakfast. And who doesn't want pizza for breakfast? Pizza for lunch or pizza anytime. Uh, you can actually just come into the kitchen and take your dough that you've already have prepared that's in the fridge and put it in the pan. Less than five minutes, you have a pizza, like a gourmet pizza, like when you go out and eat at a gourmet pizza place and they charge you way too much, but with amazing ingredients. So we're going to get started right now. Stick around and see how this works and give it a shot. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the dough that I have from last night. You can uh, learn to do this just by looking at sourdough uh, videos that I have on but you make it the same way you set the, the, the bread aside. Now I could, I mean the dough aside, I could actually take this and put this in the uh, Dutch oven and bake it and I have bread done because it's set overnight. But what you do is you just take a piece and actually I'm gonna do both still. I'm gonna make bread from this. But first, I'm gonna take what I think is the sharpest knife and there went a piece of garlic on the floor. That'll be good for down there. <laughs> we'll just leave it. Plenty more garlic where that came from. I'm just gonna slice off a piece of that dough. And with this, what we do is we just take and work it a little bit. Just make sure we have enough. It's a bit sticky. Just a little bit. Spent the whole night fermenting but you can just put it into a, into a ball. Then we're gonna take our cast iron skillet. You really need a cast iron skillet if you don't have a cast iron skillet. Get one, season it. I also have a video on that. It's called seasoning it, but really it's making it no stick into a no stick pan, but a non-toxic no stick pan. So it's already in there, but I'm also gonna add just a teeny bit of olive oil. and I'm gonna spread it around with my fingers because that's what I like to do. I like to get my fingers <clears throat> messy. Okay, now I'm going to take the dough. I'm going to give you a little better view. Since I'm going to still cook this, I'm going to put this back in the bowl. Cool little spot over here. This pan's not hot yet. So what I'm going to do now is just take the dough and spread out in the pan. Because what we're going to do is we're going to cook this, brown it on the bottom, and then we're going to put it under the broiler. This is really fast. Now that is already spread out onto the edges. It's that quick. You see that I did that like that. Now when you have dough on your hands or anything, it's always good to have that. And put your hair out of your eyes a little bit. Leaves little, little uh, pieces of dough in your hair. So, <laughs> hey, when we're in the kitchen, we have <laughs> we have to make the best of things, right? Okay. So, what we do now is we're going to take what's called Palmy Organic Strained Tomatoes, and I'm going to make the sauce. You can go into the spaghetti aisle, the spaghetti sauce aisle, and there are organic sauces. There's one called Rouse. It's already made. It has wholesome ingredients in it. Uh, for instance, in this, in this one, it's only, let's see if I can find the ingredients in here, from 100% fresh Italian tomatoes. <laughs> That's what it is. And so, we want to find stuff that doesn't have any chemicals in it. But I'm going to show you how to make this sauce. If you don't want to do it, just buy one. Have it ready. Oops. I did the wrong thing. We want to take a strainer and we want to pour it in the strainer. And it's going to drip the liquid out below. If there's too much liquid, you can get another kind that's diced tomatoes and the liquid will strain out from that also. 
but this is this one is strained tomatoes already so they've been strained there's not a lot of liquid left if you get the diced tomatoes you definitely need the the strainer now what we're going to do is take garlic and it's a pretty simple thing to do you just very carefully with a flat edge you push on that garlic clean the outside off real quick when you crush it like that it makes the skins come off really easily you just do a quick crush on it loosens the skin that comes right off stick it in the garlic crusher I think I'll cut it in half once to make it a little easier to fit in there then voila we smash it down now it all depends how much garlic you like but this is what makes it taste like pizza sauce you gotta have it put a little bit more in there now what I'm gonna do is stir it take a little salt and pepper that easy that's pizza sauce and we strained out you can see extra liquid because we don't want that to get onto the dough it comes it's it's that quick stir it around and let that liquid come out of there now all we're going to do is spread this around on the pan which is very easily and quickly done you know if you have have the sauce already made you just spread that dough out put that sauce on that's it now set the sauce aside and I have these tomatoes here you can actually put a piece of tomato on but first thing I'm gonna do is get the cheese because we gotta have cheese now you can make cheese how I was showing you to do in one video that I had or you can buy your mozzarella we're just going to smash it put it on there now the objective in the kitchen is to not get too messy so there i clean that off <laughs> actually it's uh it can be messy but it can be fun that's the main thing and healthy because when this gets done you're gonna have dough that is not going to have yeast in it it's not yeasted dough it's sourdough which has the probiotics in it and has unlocked the nutrients because there's no gluten the gluten has been neutralized by the fermentation overnight of the dough and that's the amazing thing that's why really all grains are supposed to be prepared that way that's what unlocks the nutrients and makes everything assimilable and wipes out the gluten so that it is assimilable so for all time that's what leavening was and is but it got changed in the early part of the 1900s when they started using yeasted bread yeast would make it rise with air but it would have no other uh, properties of advantage to the cooking whereas leavening from all time was to neutralize that gummy substance well it didn't do that any longer didn't unlock the nutrients the gum causes a problem with people uh, the flowers get completely denatured and and turned into non-food but I have videos on that you can see that but with this this is going to be the most healthy grains you can have uh, amazing cheese now I'm putting basil on right now now what we're going to do just for fun I'm going to take a couple slices of tomato and stick right on the top now I use cheese that comes you know in a liquid it's it's a mozzarella you don't have to go that fancy with it you can go with a regular mozzarella cheese you can use anything you want or you can make it and ferment it yourself so here's what we're gonna go with 
I'm going to put just a little bit of salt on there. Now what we do is we're going to set it on top of the burner and we want to set that below high. The main thing on the burner is at the same time, by the way, I'm going to turn on the broiler in the oven because what we're going to do is we're going to brown the bottom of this on the top of the stove and you don't want to blacken the bottom of it. You just want to brown the bottom of it. So what you need to do is take a spatula and look under there, but also don't turn it up too high. This is, this is one of the things you want to take from me and not learn the hard way. You know, you're going to mess your whole dough up and have smoke all over the place. Not saying I did that, but <laughs> so you just want to make sure that you don't uh, cook the bottom too far. So you just want to be sensitive to that. So I simply take a spatula and keep my eye on it and set it below high. Okay. Now I turn it on high at first to get it warmed up, but then back it off and just set that on there. And then it's a waiting game, but a really quick waiting game because essentially the pizza's done. The pizza's made. Now it just has to be browned on the bottom and then we stick it in under the broiler and the broiler bubbles that cheese, cooks that dough, and it happens really quickly. And we have pizza. And it's a pizza that, I mean, this isn't like junky pizza. This is like pizza you go get gourmet uh, at a gourmet place, except the dough, the bread is much better. And the sauce is pure, so you control the ingredients, and you can have it for breakfast. So, you know, what can you ask for? So now I'm, like I said, I learned, I learned the hard way to keep an eye on that. So it'll probably take about two minutes, I would say, to brown. I don't think I'll be too far off on that. Okay, right when it starts to brown underneath, and you can see when that happens by looking under it with the spatula, you want to take it off of the burner and put it under the broiler. You don't want it on the very top rack, but close enough to it so that that broiler will bubble that cheese and cook the top of that pizza. And in a very short time, it's done. And you're going to have pizza. I'm going to give you a look. And as you can see, that's coming along nicely. It's not quite long enough yet, but we'll leave it longer. Now, when that dough starts to turn brown, a golden brown, we want to take it out. The cheese will be brown on top, and that pan will be hot, so you want to definitely either have a glove or a thick rag. And there you are. Just about perfect. All depends on how exactly you prefer it, but we're going to clean the space off here and put this off onto the board. And there you have it, a beautiful pizza. I'm going to try to show you the bottom. It might be a little hard. I'll do it after I cut it. What I like to do is take a little bit of olive oil and put in a spoon and just drizzle it around on the top. And if you like, you know, you can cook it with basil, but you can also Put a little bit fresh basil on top of it afterwards if you like. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's going to be good any way it goes. So this pizza, when you cut it with a little bit of olive oil drizzled on top and that crust just perfect, there's not a better pizza that, than this. And again, with it being sourdough, mmm. For me, I like a little more salt, kind of like when you salt a, a tomato. If you ever have never salted and peppered a fresh tomato, go try that today. <laughs> it's extremely good. But when you do it with this, these are the best foods you could nourish your body with. Whole grains, 
that have been fermented to unlock the nutrients and nullify the gluten. Tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, fresh cheese, fresh basil, olive oil. Mmm. It's the ultimate in breakfast food. <laughs> breakfast food, lunch, dinner, anytime. Try this pizza. You're going to love it. And if you can make it with sourdough, it's so easy. All you need to do is keep a piece of dough like that in the fridge. I can cover that up with plastic, keep it in there, and I can do that anytime. It's so quick with a pan. And you take it out and do that. And otherwise, you can bake it very simply. I'm going to take this now and move this out of the way a little bit. I'm going to put my dough on a sheet, make a slight score in the top of it. I'm going to take my Dutch oven, which really just keeps the moisture in. I'm going to drop that in there. And now that warm oven, I'm going to utilize to bake my bread. You put it at 500, bake for about 24 minutes. And then pull it out, take the lid off, bake for another 20 minutes, and you have perfect bread. Perfect pizza, perfect bread. What more could anyone want? So hit the like button down below and also the subscribe button. You're going to love these recipes. I'm going to bring many more to you, and I hope you love this one. Let me know how it worked for you. Finally, you can make pizza at home. Real pizza. I'll see you next time.